Now, fly into more fun with Bullwinkle and Rocky. Believe it or not, it all started with a newspaper publicity stunt. The Frostbite Falls Picayune Intelligence buried a million dollars in Confederate money and offered a prize to the person who could find it. The town was soon full of holes, one of which was dug right under the town bank by Babyface Braunschweiger and his gang. When they escaped with their stolen loot, Rocky and Bullwinkle tracked them down and got it back. Now Bullwinkle is sitting in a basement cell in the sheriff's station, waiting for the bank to open. Outside, Babyface... Or as we know him, but is bad enough... ...is planning to break into the jail and get the loop back again. But that's a plan for breaking out of jail, Babyface. Of course, we just follow plan backward. Well, at work. You seen one jail break, you seen them all. First, we crash through gate in East Wall. Come on! But Boris's brilliant plan failed in just one detail. There was no gate in the East Wall. I got better idea. We get sheriff to invite us into jail. Invite us? How? Easy. All we got to do is get arrested. Of course. You've done it again, Chief. Now, here is plan. We find policeman A. Then Spike, you break streetlight. B. Three finger, you take big stick and hit little old lady C. And slug, you draw mustache on picture of pretty girl D. And what do you do, baby face? Shoot slingshot at policeman A. Then we're all arrested and wind up in jail next to suitcase money. Okay? Baby face, you're a cotton pick and jewel. You're scared, kiddo. Now everybody ready? Right. You bet. Three, two, one, zero. And Boris let fly with a slingshot at policeman A. Unfortunately, he missed and hit Spike, whose rock then flew past streetlight B and struck three finger in the head. As a result, he missed the little old lady C and caught his slug who dropped his chalk before defacing the pretty girl D. The effect on Boris was immediate. He fainted. Now, that's the way I like to see things. Nice and quiet. But the wily villain couldn't be kept down for long. You bet. Now I start from bottom up. And furiously began to dig a tunnel under the jailhouse wall. Meanwhile, in his small cell in the basement, Bullwinkle was sitting on the suitcase full of cash while Rocky stood guard right outside. I'd just like to see anybody get this money now. Yeah. It's as safe as if it was in the bank of... The bank of hope? Where's that for... What happened, Bullwinkle? Must be termites, Rock. They'd have to be awful big ones. They are. One of them's trying to grab the suitcase away from me. Well, hang on, Bullwinkle. I'll bring the sheriff. Yeah. But as you can guess, it wasn't termites under the floor at all, but that archfiend Boris Badenov. Give me that suitcase. Uh-oh, a talking termite. Let go of suitcase, you big boob. In dialect yet. Let go yourself, you thieving scoundrelly insect. Flattery will get you nowhere. Let go. Never. Then I must resort to secret weapon number 237. What's that? This. And Boris produced a large feather and began to tickle Bullwinkle's feet. <laughs> oh, 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 stop it. Stop it. Oh, no. Hey, stop. Drop suitcase. <laughs> I'll die first. <laughs> then you'll die laughing. Kitsy, kitsy, kitsy. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> and at last, weakened by laughter, Bullwinkle's grip loosened and Boris dashed off with a suitcase full of stolen mon money. Will Boris escape with his ill-gotten gains? We'll find out in our next laugh-filled episode. Who's tickling you? The subway finish or an underground round? Thank <laughs> you.